Welcome into the Jamie Chadwell Show. Kevin O'Rourke alongside the Bucks head coach. Year four for Jamie as the Bucks come off the best season in school history. Ten wins, a Big South title, and a spot in the FCS playoff quarterfinals. This year, Jamie starts with a big one at North Dakota State Saturday on a national stage. You find out in March, and now it's almost here. What's the feel like amongst the team? Well, there's obviously a, a level of excitement now that you're through your camp and, uh, you know, this game's uh, uh, getting closer and closer every day. Just And so um, there's a lot of anticipation. You know, as coaches, you're hoping that uh, uh, you're taking it a, a one day at a time with your team, but they, it's something that uh, once we found out we were playing that game and, and what North Dakota State's about, obviously, and the, the standard they are, uh, something that uh, our guys are excited about the opportunity, especially to be on TV as well. Last year, your theme was the chip on the shoulder. This year, it's the scope, the next one. Talk about how you guys came up with that and how that's played out. Well, the, you know, the main thing we wanted to try to do is continue uh, what we had built, but uh, you know, sometimes you can wear the chip out or respect thing out, and now that you, you know, you've been picked preseason, all these things, maybe that doesn't stick, but we wanted something that reminded our team of how we got to this point, and that was always going out and, and being hungry and, and, and try to hunt. And that's where the scope came from. And then just the focus of the next one was about just the next opportunity, the next play, um, you know, the next step, whatever it may be, focus on that and don't focus on uh, what outside people are saying or uh, what the preseason media or any of those things. Just focus on uh, the next one, whatever that may be. And, um, and that's something that our coaching staff, we, as we thought through, felt like that got our point across, that scope. We still have people on our sides and not the other way around. From a big picture standpoint, obviously it's it's one of 11. It's a big game, but it is what it is. But how has that affected how you guys have approached camp and how have you seen the way that maybe that's affected the way the players are prepared? Well, you hope that, you know, it's approached the same, you know, as a coach. You hope you're, you're consistent enough that, um, you know, not much has changed. Now, that's not the case. There's obvious when you, we've had some openers where that are, you know, was big. My first year we opened down the road, so that was always a big one. Then a couple of ones we've opened with people we should beat. And so I think everybody's excited for your first game, but this one with the, uh, uh, the caliber of opponent and then the magnitude of being on TV in a top 10 game, and um, there's been a little bit more, uh, I'd say a little bit more step, you know, in our guys as far as the uh, uh, knowing who we're playing and knowing that every little thing matters, which is good. The main thing is that we, as, a, as you mentioned, it is just one. It's a good one and it's a big one, but it is just one of uh, 11 that you've got guaranteed. So we have to do a good job of coaches and making sure we don't put this thing on a pedestal and uh, make it uh, bigger than what it actually is. As far as the football goes, start offensively. Kyle Copeland, he's your starting quarterback. He's a guy who's played a lot. He has three running backs that he can hand the ball to that are good options. So that's going to make you feel pretty good. Yeah, Kyle's done a good job in, in camp. I thought he's um, you know, some of the question marks that we had going into camp that was was he get, be, going to be able to handle and I think he's done a good job of that and so uh, we're proud to see the growth he's had and then you mentioned the running backs with uh, those guys have been playing a lot of football for us uh, we've got to do a good job of finding ways to get them the ball through our offense because sometimes we can uh, freeze them out ourselves if we don't uh, you know take care and make the right calls and so he's got he's got some good uh, guys to rely on there and I, I really feel our, our wide receivers even though we're inexperienced. I think we got some good playmakers there as well. So I like I like our mix of talent on that side of the ball. Um, we've got to continue to gel up front, uh, but I think we've got some uh, good players up front that are trying to lead our young guys and get them ready for uh, this season. Up front defensively is certainly a big strength for you guys. Anthony Ellis, but really eight or nine guys who can play a lot. Solomon Brown, obviously a big South freshman of the year last year. It's a unit that had a great year as a whole but that 58 points against Jacksonville State, I'm sure Chad's let them know about that here in camp. Yeah, that was a bad way to end a really good season. And so uh, I'm sure that's going to be their, uh, they'll have that in the back of their mind or their little chip that they're, they're playing for. But we do, we, we do start up front with our front, <clears throat> our defensive line and, and outside linebackers and our, our front seven have been really consistent. And then you add in the experience in our secondary with Troy and DJ and Corbin who've played a lot of football. Uh, and then Shadarius Hopkins, who got some good amount of time last year. So we've got some solid experience coming back. So um, we expect the, you know, our defense to be in another position to have a year like they had. Uh, you know, we've got to get some, uh, we've got to get those guys to play at the same level or higher. Um, but uh, we like the talent and the, and the chemistry we have on that side of the ball. So I feel uh, 
with the guys we've had replace uh, that were really good players. I mean, good players, and you can't replace them. But I like the guys that we that we've we've plugged in, and they fit into what we're trying to find. And special teams, obviously, Darius really dynamic in the return game, and a good amount of experience back as far as the specialists go. Just looking for better consistency there. <clears throat> I think that's the key word. Uh, you mentioned Darius, and, we, and we've got to get people and those other teams with him that uh, uh, will do the job to give him an opportunity to make some plays. Um, we have experience coming back in the kicking game. Um, Joseph Smith, who's you know uh, been a three-year, will be a three-year starter for us, and has done a great job. So you feel good about our short snapping, long snapping. David Kennedy made a good impact last year in kickoff. On our kickoff team, he's got to improve the consistency. And then uh, and Tyler uh, T. you know, came in out of nowhere last year and had a pretty solid year. Um, we need him to be more consistent um, for us to feel confident and when we get down inside that red zone that we can come away for some points. And that's been the you know that's been the story. I think those guys have improved. It's just can it happen when uh, those lights are on and it's, a, it's an important situation. So still uh, maybe a question mark for us going in as far as um, if we're ready for that, but uh, it's a work in progress. That's All-American Joe Smith. It is All-American Joe Smith, and um, which is you know good for him. He's put a lot of hard work in to, to earn that right, and you don't get many of those. Uh, and so, uh, but uh, he's earned it, and, and uh, I'll, I'll tell everybody, we've not had to really worry about a bad snap, so it, it takes a lot of pressure off coach for sure. TCAC 62 to 97, but is the jersey still going to be oversized? It probably will be. Uh, you know, he we wanted to keep him in 62, but he begged to change or something, so we put him in 97. So I think we've got a kicker at 99, a kicker at 97. So, um, you know, eventually he'll he'll earn a better number, I'm assuming. Buck special teams could certainly play a factor in Saturday's game against North Dakota State. We'll talk a little bit about the Bison after this, but first we'll let you get to know Chad Scott, the Bucks head strength and conditioning coach, has had a big part in preparing them over the summer and in the offseason. You're watching the Jamie Chadwell Show. Hey, let's have a great day. Let's have a great day. Hey, get a good grip of that bar now. Because I mean, it started rolling on you a little bit. Chad Scott, um, going into my fifth season as Director of Strength and Conditioning for Charleston Southern. I got here in the uh, spring of 2012. Well, the funny thing is, typical day as a strength coach doesn't necessarily exist. That's kind of the beauty of, of being a strength coach. Being a school like Charleston Southern, you know, where there's myself and then uh, another strength coach, Brandon Golden, we're in charge of 15 uh, sports. We. Uh, pretty much have to have the weight room running all day. You know, it's definitely being up on your feet and, and being active, you know, but we, we definitely enjoy it and it's, uh, it's a fun profession. Hey, on that upper body circuit, be fast with it. I want to keep a good pace in here. Let's keep a good pace. First thing Coach Chadwell and I said, and we sat down and we met, the first thing he asked me was, can we win here? You know, and after spending that first spring with those guys, you know, I immediately told him yes. I said, we can win and we can win right now. And uh, it's been awesome because Coach Chadwell literally since day one said, here you go, do what you do, have fun with it. You know, just doesn't micromanage anything, just says, let's get after it. Get up, AT! Get up, AT! Big boys doing chin up! I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I think a strength coach is a central part of a, of a program. Anybody's going to go in the weight room and, and you can change them physically. You know, you can get a guy faster, you can get a guy stronger. What we really try to focus on here is, is obviously Let's within the heart hey, and with, within the One, brain. Two, you know, we three, provide a lot boys. of mental challenges for them. We try to grow them as men. And our hopes is within the program that the sacrifices and everything that goes in with showing up at 6 a.m. with running and, and doing everything that you would do in this weight room, it obviously starts to shape their lives. And as it shapes their lives, it shapes their hearts, it shapes their minds, and then we can transfer that out to the football field. Four days! Four days on a plane! Fargo, North Dakota! They say people are faster indoors. I don't know. Yeah, I tell you, it's been phenomenal. You know, you, you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to motivate uh, guys uh, for an off-season program when you're signed up to play the number one team in the country. You know, we just really try to focus on taking one day at a time, you know, win today. At the end of the year, you know, win or lose, there's going to be some good things that we can take away from the entire process that came from what we started in January to what we will eventually accomplish at the end of season in December or so forth. 
Welcome back to the Jamie Chadwell Show. If you're interested in sponsoring it, the opportunity is there. So it is. Any uh, any food place would be great if you want to. We'll plug you. Chad Scott, who we just heard from, he's cut back on his food intake. He's lost a lot of weight, but he really prepares your team well. He does. Um, he's he's the most important, I think, coach on our staff and really any staff here of all of our uh, our teams. You know, he he has the guys or the ladies more than anybody. You know, summer, uh, during the fall, during the spring, and um, their attitude, their work ethic is all geared off the type of energy he brings. And it's one of the reasons I think that he's, you know, tried to lose a lot of weight so he can bring more energy, look a little bit better in his, you know, in his workout gear. And, um, and he's done a fantastic job with, uh, with our, one with our weight room and making it an environment that people want to go to work in. And then uh, really uh, investing into the, into the, the teams there, specifically football. Uh, for us and uh, really buying into those guys and then just getting him to getting those guys to believe in him and what we do. He talked about the autonomy he feels like he has from you and your staff. How is that important for him to do his job and important for you guys to know that he knows what he's doing? Well, I think that's a key. I mean, you got to have people you trust in, in any type of positions. And if you trust people uh, and you know that we all have the same interests, the same goals, the same objectives, uh, I think that makes your, your job easier to do. And, and I totally trust in whatever he says for our team as far as if, do we need to condition more, do we need to do this, do we need to do that, because I know he's got the pulse of them and I know he puts the work in. And that makes, that gives you comfort as a coach. And I'm sure that gives him uh, comfort is knowing he has the freedom there to do things based off of things that we've done. And I think that's why that relationship's worked. And I think that's why you've seen us improve is um, because of the type of uh, performances uh, out of that weight room he's getting for our players. North Dakota State obviously has accomplished a lot here in recent years, five straight national titles. Obviously, you're worried about Saturday in the game, but to think about some of the things they've done, winning 71 games over the last five years, and you think about the five championships, that's 20 straight playoff wins. How crazy is that for someone like you who's in this profession? It, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I don't know if that's something that, uh, and, and obviously they're still going, I don't know if that's something everybody matched when. When Appalachian State did it a few years ago, won three in a row, I mean, everybody thought, oh, that's the untouchable way to do it. Now they're at five and going on, you know, six. Uh, their consistency, um, the way they run their program, uh, and the things that they've done, you know, is unmatched and probably will be unmatched forever because of uh, just the way that uh, they've not only, uh, you know, done that, but I think every one of their championship games, they've, with the exception of one, they've dominated those. You know, it's not, they've not been close. And so when they've got there, they've really put the nail in the coffin. So, um, you just can't be, there's not enough accolades, I think, that describes the way they've built that program. And, and then, you know, coach takes it, wins three, he leaves, you think there's a dip, and there's not, you know. Uh, it's, it's even gotten even better. So it's, uh, I mean, hats off to them. You'd love to, you know, that, that's one, one thing that I'm excited about playing. We get to see up close, you know, you see on TV, but you get to see up close what they're about. And we get a chance to compete against it and see, hey, how far are we away from something that they have and um, that, that excites you as coaches because you get to go against the best right away and uh, and then sort of get that all right here they're the standard this is what we got to get to as far as the nuts and bolts go offensively defensively they're kind of the type of team that their identity is their identity and they're really good at it they are and i think that's what we reason why i mentioned consistency they you know they do they can do some things that everybody else is doing uh, and they have those i think in their package but they're going to tell you this is how we're going to line up this is what we're going to run, and they just execute it. And um, I'll say they're simple. Um, they have a lot of different things they do, but you can tell it's just within their system. And, uh, and they, one thing that they don't do, they never beat themselves. They're never out on position on defense. Uh, they don't turn the ball over on offense. They take, they do, they're smart with the way they do things. And if you're going to beat them, you have to beat them. They're not going to be uh, ill prepared. Uh, they're not going to beat themselves. And so anybody that's beat them, and the people that I have here, not many. The one to have. I mean, you get their respect for doing that because uh, they make you earn everything you get, and, and that'll be tough sledding for us. And we're going to have to have a, a good game plan, and we're going to have to uh, crawl uh, and fight uh, for every little thing that we get up there. We're going to have to try to match uh, their energy and match their physicality. We have to match that. We have to bring our own, um, and um, that's what I'm excited about. The test we talk about being physical. We know they are, so we got to see if our physical matches up with theirs. You talk about being one of 11, but you also talk about the other side of it, knowing that this is about the biggest stage you could ever have for an FCS program. What's your message come Saturday? Well, I think uh, two things. One is just that they've, you've earned the opportunity to be here. Go enjoy it. 
you know, we, everything's done. Just go enjoy it. Have fun. Don't think about their crowd. Don't think about anything. Just go enjoy and play ball and have fun. And then two is just be in the moment. You know, I mean, it is a big one, but be in it. Embrace it. You know, it's, it's uh, you mentioned 1 of 11, but it is a big one. And it's an opportunity that I think a lot of kids coming here didn't think they'd ever get. And so um, embrace that opportunity and uh, leave it on the field, you know, no matter what. Let's, let's let everybody around this country know what our program's about. Bucks will have a chance to do that Saturday, 7.36 Eastern time kickoff on ESPN. Mac Brown on the color commentary. That's pretty cool. Mac's a Tennessee guy. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Again, they can watch that game ESPN shortly after 7.30 on Saturday night. For Jamie Chadwell, my name is Kevin O'Rourke. Thanks for watching the Jamie Chadwell Show.